Today, we're going to be talking about the seventh and final ring of hell, the Sloth Ring, and how Belphegor came to rule over it. This is the seventh and eighth part series, breaking down the rulers and elites of hell, with the next part circling back to how Lucifer rules over all of the other princes. Subscribe so you don't miss it, and let's jump into it. Sloth is most definitely the ring we know the absolute least about, but the few things we do know have led to some really interesting possibilities within the show. The inspiration for Belphegor as the Prince of Sloth comes from the Peter Binsfield classification of demons, and there are several legends surrounding how he became associated with that sin and why he rebelled from heaven. My favorite of these is that Belphegor was so lazy that he didn't want to do any of the work required of him by heaven, and thus rebelled so he could stay in hell, doing absolutely nothing. Other depictions show him as a crazy inventor, making machines to do his work for him. I had previously theorized that the native species of the Sloth Ring may be the Hellhounds, as they are treated like a servant class in Hell, something I could imagine Belphegor taking advantage of. However, this signature on Luna's adoption certificate was confirmed to be Beelzebub's from the Gluttony Ring. Instead, Belphegor's business appears to be the dealing out of pills, something we first got a glimpse of on Blitz's Hellphone screen back in Episode 7. While all the other princes have pretty direct references to their names in their corresponding apps, the only one that would make sense for Belphegor is just titled Sleeping Pills. In the Season 2 premiere, we also saw that Belphegor dealt in happy pills as well, with Stolas going from taking just one every morning to taking an entire handful just to get through things. I doubt there is much need for actual medicine in Hell, with hospitals focusing more on injuries than anything else. With that in mind, the pills in distribution would be less about health and more about an effect, getting you to sleep, taking away pain, and forcing you to be happy, etc, etc. Other princes seem to build up their businesses around not just their sins, but how their sin can suit them. For instance, Osmodius's club where he gets to not just perform, but enjoy the entertainment himself. With that in mind, Belphegor likely got into the pharmaceutical biz by first using the pills for himself. Sloth as a sin is very interesting, as it can be very self-destructive even when you have everything taken care of for you. Belphegor is a ruler of Hell, but between his servants and the other princes taking care of the important royal duties of Hell, Belphegor could live a life of luxury with virtually no stressful obligations. Sleeping in, as well as resting too much during the day, would lead to struggle sleeping at night, staying up later, thus sleeping in later, and a person's life becoming about how much they struggle to get back to a normal sleep cycle. To start combating this, Belphegor would create the sleeping pills, and then would create a business out of them like the other princes do, to help better sustain a profitable system around his sin. As time went on, a person with nothing to do and no responsibilities would start to feel meaningless and then depressed, and happy pills would be a solution that quickly followed. In addition to sleeping pills and happy pills, I imagine Belphegor also distributes diet pills as a lazy alternative to exercise. Belphegor thus perpetuates his sin by allowing demons to continue a slothful lifestyle while dealing with the symptoms it creates instead of the cause. In my charts for the Seven Rings of Hell, we seem to find accurate homes for each demon species except the demons we place in the Sloth Ring, which was highly speculative and only put there by process of elimination. These demons are referred to in the fandom as Candleheads and Baphomets because they resemble the demonic figure Baphomet. Baphomet is an important figure in satanic ideology and was believed to be the secret deity worshipped by the Knights Templar. He has been used to represent Satan, Lucifer, and the general figure we think of as the Devil. What seems to officially connect his little candle-headed demons to the Sloth Ring is the candle image we can see on Belphegor's pill bottles as part of his branding. Baphomet is not a part of the Seven Princes as classified by Peter Binsfeld, and like the Ars Goetia, he kind of has his own lore that makes him an almost separate form of nobility. Now if the candle heads are native to Sloth, it would make sense that Baphomet would have some power there as well. It is possible that in Hell of a Boss they will actually turn out to be the same entity, with Belphegor perhaps having a dual role. However, there is nothing I can find so far that connects Belphegor to Baphomet, at least not in the way that Osmodius is depicted in both the Seven Princes hierarchy and the Ars Goetia, or how Beelzebub could also be in the Ars Goetia as Baal because of the roots of their name. Instead, Belphegor may just be so lazy that another demonic figure had to rise up and take control of his ring, essentially serving Belphegor, but being able to rule over all of the Sloth ring as a result. And with how lazy Belphegor is, I think Baphomet is taking advantage of him and probably has the better deal in this arrangement. The Candleheads would work as Belphegor's minions, but really be loyal to Baphomet, who seems to have other followers outside of the Candleheads and Sloth as well. In Episode 5, for instance, we can see that Millie's brother has a Baphomet tattoo on his arm. 
Baphomet is considered the Satan figure in the Church of Satan as well, however, so who knows exactly how all these things will connect when we finally get to meet Belphegor in the show for ourselves, as well as Baphomet. Each ring of hell has a uniquely colored sky, with the sloth ring having a pink sky. This seemed odd to me just personally, as it's such a harsh color for a sky, and a place built on laziness, at least if the pink tone in Stolas's mansion is any indication of what it might look like. I imagine it having a darker sky, like the purple sky of the Envy ring, with pink being a more glamorous background choice for the social media-focused Envy demons. In the pilot, we can see the Pride Ring sky gets a little pink in the morning, however, and it makes sense that as we get to the end of the Seven Rings, the end colors would bleed into each other again. On Verostica's band shirt sold at the Shark Robot Hell of a Boss merchandise store, we can see that a prominent location she performed in for her tour was Dreamville in the Sloth Ring, encouraging the idea that it is a place of lazy relaxation, a vacation destination for other rings perhaps. But I imagine that the pills and the intense focus on not being stressed will make most of the people in the Sloth Ring actually pretty high-strung and neurotic, throwing more and more handfuls of pills in their mouths as they deal with more and more stress by trying to just relax. Some fans have speculated that the Sloth Ring is not an actual physical location, but more of a plane of ethereal existence close to Hell's core. Some have even theorized that all of Hell's rings are just one metaphysical layer lower than each other, instead of them being physically stacked on top of each other. Regardless of if that is true, it would be interesting to see the Sloth Ring being a place not quite like the other rings, one where beings like Belphegor only quasi-exist in a dreamlike state. Considering how deep Belphegor is in the pharmaceutical industry, however, it seems like a very physical place where demons succumb to the same issues that humans do when left to sloth for too long. This is everything I know and could theorize on about for the sloth ring, but what do you guys think? Let me know your theories for this ring in the comments down below, and while you're down there, don't forget to hit that subscribe button because you won't want to miss part 8 on this series where I talk about how Lucifer rules all of hell. This is, of course, already available in our early access section. Just use the join button to join for 4 a month to get early access to this and all of our other videos. See you guys next time.